Today on Real Ghost Stories Online, her family bought a new home and her father invited a neighbor to come in and see the changes they were making. He politely declined, saying, I'm not going in there. There's scary things in there. And they soon realized he was right. Welcome to Real Ghost Stories Online. Call in your real ghost story now at 855-853-4802 or write in at realghoststoriesonline.com. You are about to enter the world of the unknown and quite possibly the undead. This is Real Ghost Stories Online. There it is. 855-853-4802 to share your real ghost stories with us. Get access to the bonus episodes, advanced episodes, all of the stuff commercial-free. Apple Podcasts. You can get it there on our premium channel, patreon.com slash realghoststories or ghostpodcast.com. All right, I'm curious to jump into this one and hear the uh, story of why the neighbors uh, don't want to go into the home. Let's take a listen. Hi, this is Angela. Um, I live in Georgia right now, but I grew up in New York, and that's where my story takes place. Um, basically, when I was a younger, um, was probably teenage years, we moved into a house, and um, it was the first house my father was able to buy for us. He worked really hard to be able to get it, and um, it was a working class neighborhood, but it was um, a pretty nice house. And um, one of the first experiences we had was that my father. You know, there was one of the neighbors was walking by and introduced themselves and he was like, oh, come inside, come inside, come and see, you know, what we're doing and, you know, things like that. And the neighbor was like, oh, no, no, that's okay. I'm not going to go in there. And my father was like, why? And the neighbor was just kind of like, well, there's scary things in there. You know, people talk about it all the time. There's, you know, something in that house. So my father just kind of blew it off because my dad was a big, you know, tough truck driver guy. And, you know, he didn't really believe, I don't think. I mean, I think he kind of thought maybe there could be things, you know, spirits or ghosts, but he didn't really focus on that or let it bother him. Um, And then as time went on after we moved in, we did realize that things started to happen. And... Um, My dad, because he was a truck driver, he would be out of the house very early in the morning. By 5 o'clock in the morning, my dad was out and off to work. And um, at the time, my sister and I had separate rooms on the second level, but there was an attic. And when my dad would leave for work that early in the morning, my mom um, at that time was a stay-at-home mom. And she would usually go back to bed for a little while before we had to get up for school. And she would be lying in bed, and she could hear noises up in the attic. She can hear, like, boxes, the sound of, like, boxes being dragged around or somebody just like kind of like moving things and placing them and and, you know on top of each other or unstacking things and placing them on the floor that's exactly what it sounded like Um, but the attic was empty which was the weird thing there wasn't any boxes up there there wasn't anything that needed you know could be dragged around so that was like our first kind of like inkling and my mom would be like you know I sit here and I know I hear things but you know she again she just kind of blew it off kind of like you know I'm not gonna Really, you know, let it bother me. My parents are pretty Catholic, so, you know, my mom always had crucifixes and, you know, pictures of, you know, Jesus on the wall and different things like that. Um, but um, slowly, like I said, things just kept happening. And, like, my mom had clotheslines in the backyard. Um, it was during the time where people would actually hang their clothes outside to dry. Maybe people still do. But, um, you know, so she went outside to hang some clothes one day. And when she came back to go into the house, we had a side door that led out into the backyard. She couldn't get in, and it was locked. And she just, you know, she couldn't get back in the house. And she's just like... I don't understand. She's like, how is this door locked? I mean, it was like a deadbolt kind of door. So unless you closed it, it deadbolted it, you know, it wouldn't, it it should be open. So she actually had to stay outside until my sister and I got home from school. So we had keys, obviously, and we were able to open the door and, you know, let her in the house. And we were like, mom, why are you sitting out here? And she's just like, the door's locked. She's like, I don't know. I couldn't get back in. So that was another thing. It's just the weirdest thing. And then we had a cat and my cat, 
you know, I would put the cat, you know, the, the, my cat had a bed and a whole thing set up in the basement. So at night when it was time for me to go to sleep, I would open up the door that led to the basement so my cat could go down. And I remember always having the hardest time getting him to go down to the basement to go sleep. And I just chalked it up to he didn't want to leave me. You know, he just wanted to be upstairs or be with us and stuff. And then my mother would always mention that when she would open the door, um, in the morning because it was this door in the kitchen and you had to open it to get out through the side door, which was used a lot. And then there was also stairs that led to the basement. So whenever she opened up that door, the cat was just like right there, like right at the edge of the door. Like she had not gone down the steps or spent any time in the basement at all. And, you know, I just started feeling so bad that I would let him sleep in my room um, because I just was like, that's terrible. Why is he like crunched up sleeping, you know, against the door like that? Why I won't go down to the basement. Um, then another time, um, it was just the weirdest thing. My dad came home, and I was actually out shopping with my sister and my mom. We weren't even home. And my dad came home early, and he had gone to this bakery that we really loved, and he had gotten this bread that we liked and this cheese, and, you know, he liked to make, like, these little sandwiches. So he heard, like, somebody. We had a den in the, that was off the living room and the living room was off the kitchen so he's in the kitchen and he's like taking out the bread and taking out the cheese and he hears somebody come out of the den close the door to the den and run up the stairs so he assumed it was me because i was always the one running up and down the stairs and he was like he called the stairs he was like angie i'm home and i have that i have some of the bread and i have cheese come down and have a sandwich and nothing you know he just waited and waited and nobody came downstairs so he was like you know he called upstairs again and no answer so he when we came home from shopping we found him standing you know by his car he used to sometimes just like to stand outside lean against his car you know in the driveway and we found him you know standing outside and we're like hey pop well, you know what's up how you doing and you know we could tell that he was like startled because he wasn't afraid of anything and he didn't really you know he wasn't like i said that kind of person he was this big tough truck driver and you know so he's just like you know the weirdest thing happened and he told us about it, and we were just kind of like, whoa, you know, that's crazy. Because he, he knew, he specifically heard somebody come out of the den, close the door, because it was a door that made, like, a lot of noise when you closed it, and run, go running up the stairs. So it wasn't even, like, walking. So, you know, when he, he told us about it, we were like, oh, my God. So it was just kind of, like, crazy. And we just, like, little things like that would just happen all the time. And we found out later on that the person who um, originally owned the house was an older couple. And when they passed away, they left the house to their son, and they didn't want it sold. They wanted their son to keep it. But the wife of the son wasn't really keen on her in-laws, and she wasn't keen on keeping the house, so she made him sell it. When they sold it, the, supposedly the wife made a comment like, oh, I'm so glad we've gotten rid of it, this, you know, you know, she never liked me anyway. And I think she was referring to, you know, her mother-in-law. And, you know, so I don't know if it was this older couple that maybe they didn't like the fact that the house was sold, um, you know, when it shouldn't have been. It, it was just very, just weird. Like, like I said, like little things like that would happen all the time. I mean, later on, my sister actually moved up to the attic and made it her bedroom. So, you know, I, I think that things kind of calm down but in the beginning it was just really freaky and creepy and so you know just like lots of noises that went bump in the night and you know obviously things like that like that I just described so um I guess you know I'm not sure what you make of it um you know we lived there just fine and you know we were freaked out every now and then but you know nothing it was nothing serious and nobody ever got hurt so I don't know uh, anyway, I wanted to share the story, like I said, that happened to me growing up in Long Island, New York. Okay, um, I will call back with a different story later on that I have also. Thank you very much. I love you guys. Bye. Thank you for sharing that experience. Thoughts on that one? Well, think of the other story of a Long Island house uh, <clears throat> that had creepy stuff in the attic. Um, and, <laughs> I'm automatically what, what are you, Horror. What right? are you thinking of? What that could that possibly be? I could never, like, if there was creepy stuff in the attic, 
Yeah. I would never put my bedroom up there. Yeah. Not in a million years. Yeah. And I'm not, I don't get scared that easily, but it sounds like they actually had some stuff going on. Seems mm -hmm. like it was pretty, it wasn't like it was malicious or anything like that. But, you know, hearing people walk around, hearing things moving around and stuff like that, I still would not find myself sleeping in the attic. Yeah, you know, attics have never been, like, it's basements for me that are, feel like more creepy. I don't know why, but it just, it just feels like that. But I suppose each house has its own feel depending on, you know, what it's like and history and, and all of that. But I had uh, a house in Oshkosh yeah. that the, the second floor was pretty much the attic, but they had redone it. Mm -hmm. That stupid thing was haunted. It was haunted. Really? Yeah, I didn't know about it at first, but mm -hmm. I had a friend who was living with me at the time. She lived on the second floor and she would say, oh, I hear you guys downstairs. You're making noise. I'm like, We're, I'm not even home. I don't uh, know what you're talking about. And then she said that she would hear her name being whispered in her ear upstairs. And I never believed her. I thought she was crazy and I still do. But <laughs> then after she moved out, I had an experience that proved that she was right. And it freaked me out after that. I would not go upstairs. Yeah, then, then at that point, it's like, well, time to move. <laughs> that, that's what happened. <laughs> exactly. I, I, mean, I ended up selling the house and getting the hell out of it. Did you ever speak to whoever bought it later? But like, hey, anything weird happening here? You know, It has had, it's so weird because for a long time, the owners before me had it for a very long time. Then I had it for quite a bit. I mean, six, seven years I owned it. Yeah. And then since I moved out, it's had owner after owner after owner after owner. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. What does that mean? That everyone's having the same experiences, you think? Possibly. Yeah. And they couldn't handle it, maybe. Yeah. That's a creepy, creepy one. Thanks for uh, sharing your stories with us. 855-853-4802 is our phone number. If you'd like to share yours, we'd love to hear it. Of course, you can uh, also write in at realghoststoriesonline.com. Get access to our bonus episodes, advanced episodes, and more. All of that there. On Apple Podcasts, our premium channel, patreon.com slash real ghost stories or ghostpodcast.com. Until next time, for Todd, I'm Tony. Thanks for listening to Real Ghost Stories Online.